From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea, put out a statement criticising, condemning the humanitarian outrage in Gaza and calling for a ceasefire. Last week, on the steps of Buchanan Street, I reiterated that call and we've done so publicly since. And I can tell you that not one of our 550,000 members in that period have contacted us to say that we are doing the wrong thing. They know that we are doing the right thing and they know that you are doing the right thing. Now, lots of people do say to me, and to other trade unionists. Why Palestine? Why now? Why not all of the other terrible things that are happening around the world? And my response is this. 30, 30, 40 years ago, I campaigned along with trade unionists and those of you who are old enough against apartheid South Africa because our government was doing the wrong thing. And in that same decade, 
I campaigned against the atrocities of Saddam Hussein because our government at that time was doing the wrong thing. And 30 years later, I campaigned against the war on Iraq because our government was doing the wrong thing. It is our duty, it is our mission, it is our moral necessity for us to stand up when our government is doing the wrong thing and not just our government, all of our political leaders. And I welcome... I welcome every political representative who has had the backbone, who has had the common decency and the common humanity to say no to their party line and to stand up for the people of Palestine. But I will not be happy, nor should you be happy, till every one of our representatives, every one of our so-called leaders, speaks with one voice an end to the genocide, cease firing in Gaza and attend an end to the oppression in the West Bank. Freedom now. Can Moath Khaled from Gaza please come up here? Friend, at the United Nations, Europe was isolated as the party, as the continent favouring murder and ethnic cleansing and genocide. The rest of the world repudiated it. But Israel doesn't care about the United Nations. When they invaded Beirut in 82, they killed thousands of people. When a UN delegation came to visit, the Israelis wanted to make a point. At exactly 2.42, they shelled the center of Beirut, killing people to tell the United Nations to suck on it. At 338, they shelled the center of Beirut again, murdering people to tell the United Nations they had America and Britain and they didn't give a damn. They murdered people to tell the United Nations they don't care about it. But they do care about us. They care about trade unionists around the world beginning to boycott them. They're afraid. Never mind the bluster, their cold killer eyes conceal a fear that we know what they're doing and we are prepared to take action. Moath Khaled is from Gaza, please listen to him. You don't often hear an authentic Palestinian voice, unmediated, one voice to your ears. He deserves your attention. Moath. Thank you so much for coming today. Uh, I have lost contact with my family for over one week ago. It wasn't actually yesterday only. And this is the case for many of the Palestinian who's living here in Glasgow. We don't know if our families, they will make it or not. Uh, uh, we don't know if they are still alive. We don't know if they are injured. We don't know actually what's happening to them. But I, uh, I have only one message, which is from my sister. She's a 16 years old, and I think she, she, is, she understands better than many thousands of those politicians who are using us for their interests and using us for their votes and to use us to win election and those kind of things. The, the message I received from her was seven days ago, and she says exactly we don't have any safe place in Gaza and we don't know what will happen next to us and we don't know when we be living to see a Palestine free they school us about human rights and peace but we live in hybrid words where Western media, mainstream media and governments calls for democracy and peace all over the world but when it comes to Palestine and when it comes to Gaza they turn a blind eyes and but yeah, yeah just a sec sorry they want to remove our people from Gaza to Egypt and they have done this to my grandparents 
and they promise they have been promised by the UN it is only a few days a few weeks but we have been waiting for over 70 years we are not leaving we prefer to to die standing rather than dying in our knee so free free Palestine Rishi, Rishi, can't you see? Israel is a killing spree. Rishi, Rishi, can't you hide? You can't hide. You just signed off a genocide. Rishi, Rishi, you will see. Palestine will be free. Thank you so much. Behind you is the city chambers. Behind you is Glasgow city chambers. And we want to demand of Glasgow city chambers that they rip out the Israeli surveillance system which is watching us now. We want to demand, where is the Palestinian flag flying from this city chambers? Yeah. A Palestinian flag flies from Dundee city chambers every day of the year. We want the same thing here, even bigger. Yeah. And why has, this, why has the council agreed to adopt the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism, which is bogus, which tries to protect Israel from criticism. This is an outrage. We want it scrapped, and we want it scrapped right now. But I want to welcome Councillor Saqib Ahmed. As one of the voices speaking out, Welcome him, please. Assalamu alaikum. We have seen 8,000 people being killed in this conflict. 8,000 Palestinians being killed. Half of them are children. Our children. Yes, we have seen 1,400 people being killed in Israel. But indiscriminate bombing of Gaza just doesn't justify we want this war to end now we have seen conflict going on for last 75 years and where is international community where is United Nations we do not see them they are hiding somewhere wherever you see a conflict unfortunately we see the religious based conflict but unfortunately this con Starmer, you can't hide we can see the genocide Sunak Starmer, you can't hide we can see the genocide but we value those who speak out against their leaders personally I'd like to see Sunak and Starmer in a criminal court for supporting crimes against humanity and we will never forgive, never forgive, and never forget the children under the rubble of Gaza while some politicians refuse to call for a ceasefire. Never forgive. <laughs> Carol Mochen. Carol is an MSP for South of Scotland for the Labour Party. She's prepared to speak out in front of this banner Stop the genocide! Please listen to Carol. Free, free, free Palestine! Free, free, 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 Palestine! Thank you! Thank you, everyone! And it is wonderful!
thrilled to see such a great crowd standing strong for human rights and justice across the country and of course across the world. What we are seeing in Gaza is unprecedented in modern times as 8,000 have now been killed, thousands have been injured, children who have, you know, who cannot help where they were born. Children in darkness as bombs are falling and their family unable to contact the outside world. Let me be clear, let me be clear, I stand with all the innocent people in Palestine, a people persecuted for decades, who have lived for 17 years under siege and 56 years under occupation. I stand against all violence and abhor the murder of all innocent people in recent events. And I believe Scotland stands with them. And it is high past time that our leaders stop standing with Netanyahu as he provides, presides over the killing of children and the injured in ever increasing numbers. And let me say this. Let me say this. We all remember what happened last time the UK blindly followed the USA into conflict. We do not need to stand side by side with them now. This is a moral issue and the UK must stand for justice and live up to their responsibilities. They have responsibilities to ensure a road to peace in the Middle East and deliver on the promise of a Palestinian state. We can do our bit here in Scotland to call for fuel and food to be delivered to Palestinians to ensure that electricity and water are provided to Norse casualties and to demand with absolute certainty that a ceasefire must happen now. Yes. Diplomacy is the answer. Everyone here today must, and I know they will, go away and dedicate themselves to this goal. Glasgow, war crimes are being committed in front of our eyes and the UK government are doing nothing to stop it. I have not been elected to sit quietly and let this happen. So I am clear, there must be an immediate ceasefire now. And I... And I call on all the leaders across the parties to join with other politicians in Scotland and the UK and making that whole happen. I call for a ceasefire now. A ceasefire now. Ceasefire now. Ceasefire now. Do you want to march? We're not asking the police for permission. Should we ask the police for permission? Should we ask the city council who refuse? That motion is declared passed. Friends, I want, before we march, before, it's very important by the way, when you ask people for permission to do something, you give them the right to say no. We do not concede that. We are protesting against war crimes by our state. Crimes against humanity supported by our state. We shouldn't be asking the state for permission to do that. Yeah. Friends, I'm going to ask you for one minute silence. One minute silence, not for the seven, eight thousand dead in this butchery, but for the 120,000 Palestinians murdered by the State of Israel since 1948. That means for every second that we stand silent, we commemorate 2,000 dead Palestinians. Every second, for one minute, 
Let's contemplate our grief, our amazing, the awe in which we hold the Palestinian people for their resistance and their fortitude. They are an inspiration to the entire world. One minute silence, please. One second for 2,000 dead. One minute silence. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Could Alison Thulis MP? Friends, friends, unfortunately, whenever we get a terrible thing like this, a lot of people come out the woodwork to try to make money out of it. We need money for campaigning. We donated, we're trying to donate money from last week, but we need money for campaigning to pay for, to pay for all this. So please listen to our fundraiser, Rizzi. I start off in the name of our Lord, the most gracious and most merciful. Our Lord and your Lord. Yes? Yes. Okay. Alhamdulillah. First of all, a couple of things. I was in Gaza. Last time I was in Gaza, they had did 23 days of bombing. 23 days of bombing. When I was in Gaza, I asked everybody the same questions. The locals, the parliamentarians, the, uh, the police, everybody that could come across asked them the same question. What do the Israelis want? What do the Israelis want? And everybody gave me the exact same answer. The exact same answer. The answer was, they want Palestine. They want Gaza. That's what it was. So my brothers and sisters, I need you to, I need you to, when I was, so th that was the one question. The other question I asked them, what do you want? What do the Gazians want? What do the Palestinians want? And the answer was, we want, we want two things. One is, we want your prayers, your supplications, your duas. And the second thing is, please, please tell people the truth. That's all it was. They want the truisms. That's all it was. So my brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you very quickly what I saw over there in a couple of, in a couple, a few seconds. What I saw was the parliamentarian buildings bombed out, the police stations, the nurseries, the schools, the banks, the shops, you name it. And the thing that got me the worst was when I seen the old folk sheltered, sheltered housing association. So I seen beautiful buildings, lovely, freshly painted, rub casted, everything. And what happened was you seen great big bombs right through them. Now I know you guys have all got a, a nanny, a nan. Have you got a nan? Have you got a daddy? Yes, we've all got a gran or a grandmother, whether that's be English, Scottish or Punjabi, we all have it. Think of them, think of what they're going through over there just now, after all this bombing, my brothers and sisters. So what I need from you is the three Ds, the three D for Delta. One is I need the Dwas, can you give me that? Yes. Can you give me your good deeds? Yes. Now can you give me your donations? Yes. Yeah, 
guys. Mashallah. Managerial background. What can I say? The three Ds. Okay, my brothers and sisters, what I want from you now is I want you to donate. Very, very simple. You can use the QR code that's on all the volunteers, all right? Or you can go straight to the base. We can give you short codes. We can take credit card payments. We can take PayPal. We can take any kind of way, any way you want to do it. Right? We'll even take crypto. But one thing that is more important than anything, I don't want the funds to go to the wrong people. Can you do that for me? Okay, so very simple. There's charlatans amongst us just now. I need you to make sure when you give your money, it goes to the right source. We have got two charities here. The MCS, Muslim Kings of Scotland. The Friends, can I get an idea? We're going down. We're going down to the arms factory on Wednesday. Can I have an idea who will come to govern to take part in that lobbying and persuasion of the arms workers. Yeah! Wednesday, don't change your mind even if it's raining. Would you agree? Yeah! Four, four o'clock outside, outside British Aerospace and Tallies. And if you want to come with tins of paint and paint big Palestinian flags, you'll be very, very welcome. The monstrous, the, the monstrous, the monstrous Suella Braverman wants to make these flags a crime. Paint Palestinian flags everywhere in your area, on every wall, on every gable end, on the road. Paint it. Don't ask for a committee to ask you to do it. Just go and do it! Yeah. On Wednesday night we're going to meet here as well at half six and we're going to project a Palestinian flag onto all these buildings around George Square. Yeah. Half past six in George Square, come here and join in another demonstration. Friends, Alison Thewlis is an SNP member of the Scottish Parliament for, she'll tell me, for Westminster, sorry, for Westminster, the House of Darkness, <laughs> also known as Mordor. Alison, she's speaking up, she's standing up against the Israeli genocide and for a ceasefire now. A big hand please for Alison Thewlis. You can't see what I can see from this stage right here, but I see people of all different countries, of all different nationalities, people who were born in Glasgow, people who have made Glasgow their home. And I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out here this afternoon again to show your strength of feeling against what is happening in Gaza. I want you to know that I have never had so many emails as I have had over these past two weeks. People in Glasgow demanding a ceasefire. People in Glasgow demanding the end to this awful, awful, appalling situation. The, the deaths of babies and children and mothers who just happened to be in the wrong place as missiles rained down upon them. I want to tell you how shocked I was that yesterday at the United Nations there was a resolution on the protection of civilians and the upholding of legal and humanitarian obligations. The very, very basics of international law on which we all depend. And what did Britain do in our name? They abstained. Not in our name, Glasgow. Not in our name. Not in our name, people. Not in our name, friends. So I am glad that so many people turned out today. I'm glad that so many people asked us as politicians to raise your voice in Parliament and we will not stop raising our voices until there is a ceasefire. Because it cannot be right that the Secretary General of the United Nations has to go down to the border and beg for aid to be allowed into Gaza. That is not right. That is not right. The people of Gaza 
need aid. They need aid now. And they need a ceasefire now. So friends, keep raising your voices. Keep raising your voices. Let's fill this square, let's fill this city with voices demanding a ceasefire. And let this ring out all the way to the Houses of Parliament and all the way to Gaza so they know that we stand for them and we stand for peace, friends, don't we? We stand for peace. Thank you. Friends, we are hearing, we're hearing from members of Labour and the SNP and if you're tribal, you shouldn't be here. We want them and they will go back into their parties and fight because in their parties also, in both of them, there are very hard-line Zionists who support the state of Israel and all its crimes. So we welcome on the platform here those who are prepared to stand up against genocide and for an, and for an immediate ceasefire. Please, the next speaker is Ivan McKee. SNP uh, MSP for Glasgow Proven. Who's here from Proven? Thank you, and it's wonderful to see so many people here today out to support the Palestinians in Gaza and across the West Bank and call for that immediate ceasefire. And I don't need to tell you what we're seeing on our TV screens, here on the radio and reading about in our newspapers, the absolute humanitarian crisis that's unfolding in Gaza and it's getting worse. No food, no water, no medicine, no electricity, now no communications, hospitals being bombed, absolutely shocking, unacceptable. And so it's great to see so many people coming out to make their voices, make their voices heard. Because the reality of this is politicians need to stand up and come out and make their voices heard. You need to contact your politicians and make them know what you think about this. Get your friends and family to do the same. Because as Alison said, politicians respond when they hear that their voters are taking this seriously and it's the most important thing that there is and I commend the members from all parties that are here today um, and I know that there's more and more politicians are coming out over the last few days calling for a ceasefire because the reality is that all politicians need to do that the reality is that enforced uh, collective punishment is a war crime forced relocation is a war crime. Sieging a civilian population is a war crime. Depriving that civilian population of food, water, medicine is a war crime. The international community recognises that. Those that are responsible for that need to be held to account for it. And those that are appeasing those who are responsible for it also need to be held to account for it. That's what we're calling for. As I say, it's great to see so many people here calling for peace. Uh, people from all over, uh, all different communities, including, and I have to say, noted this, and I'm absolutely delighted to see that, members of the Jewish community here today, because... Thank you. Because the hearts go out to what's happening in Gaza, uh, what's happening in the killings in the West Bank, but also to those Israelis who are impacted by Hamas's terrorist actions uh, earlier uh, this month. But we have to recognise this conflict goes back a very, very long way and didn't just start on the 7th of October. And for there to be a lasting peace, that isn't going to happen through security measures or through a military solution. It's going to happen when there's a negotiation, a fair and just peace for Palestinians. That's what needs to happen. So we call for a ceasefire now. That's what needs to happen. And make sure your representatives know that. Thank you very much, Glasgow. Friends, do you want, do you want to drive the arms companies, the merchants of death, out of Glasgow? I know you do, but how much do you want to drive them out? Our next speaker is Colm Bryce from Derry in Northern Ireland, and they started they kicked the Raytheon Arms Company out of Derry. And we are inspired by that. And I want you all to pledge you will try to repeat it. 
Colin Bryce from Derry. Thanks very much, Mick. Um, as Mick said, uh, we drove Raytheon out of Derry in 2006 at the height of the murderous uh, Israeli war on Lebanon. We occupied their, their offices, we wrecked the place, we caused half a million pounds worth of damage. Um, and we did it because we were completely sick of politicians like Tony Blair, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush coming and lecturing people in Ireland about taking violence out of politics and about lecturing us about peace while they bombed their way across the Middle East while they continued to arm Israel. And when we went to trial, we put the chief executive of Raytheon in the dock and we confronted him with the evidence that it was Raytheon weapons that were, were used to carry out the massacre in Cana at the height of, at the height of that bombing. And they had no answer to it. And the jury in Belfast acquitted us because they, they agreed with us that we were acting to prevent the commission of a greater crime. That, that we, when we drove Raytheon out of Derry, they said they couldn't, even the courts in Derry, even the courts in the north of Ireland couldn't guarantee their safety anymore and, they ne and they'd never come back. That's the sort of action I think that we need. It goes hand in hand with the building of a mass movement like us here on the streets today. I was on the magnificent demonstration in London last week of 300,000 people. I'm hearing reports there's half a million people in London today. That is the sort of demonstrations that we need. And it gives confidence to people then to take further action. And we need a sense of urgency. It's great. The trade unions now are coming out and saying they're passing motions calling on railway workers and train drivers to refuse to move arms. Unions in Italy are saying they're going to refuse to lo load arms onto ships bound for Israel. That's the sort of action that we need. And I completely agree with what Mick's saying about going for the arms companies here in Glasgow. We need to combine the two things. We also need walkouts. I think it's magnificent what the university students did last week. Walking out pledging to occupy and when, when the bombing, uh, against, against the bombing, everywhere in every workplace, on every university campus, we should be trying to organize to do the same things. It's so urgent now that we do that. And it's so urgent, I think, we should make a call to encourage all of that, to call a national demonstration for all of Scotland here in Glasgow in the next couple of weeks. Now is the time to step it up. Now is the time to take action. All the best to all of you, and thanks very much for being out here today. Thank you, Colm. Thank you, Colm. The last speaker has been campaigning for Palestine for decades, for decades. So two minutes, please, for Pauline McNeil, and then we will march out of this corner here behind this banner. Behind this banner. Pauline. Thank you, my friends, brothers and sisters.
members of Elgin Arms System, Israel's biggest arms company in Central London. <laughs> Shame on you! It's important to remember we can make a difference, we can win! Yeah! yeah. Free, free! Palestine! Free, free! Palestine! Free, free! Palestine! Free, free!
nation no more.
fade down, all of a sudden slaughtering families with the push of a button. I want freedom for the population. Palestine! 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 
wouldn't see the bird.
of the optional recognition software. Are you raging? If you're raging and I'm raging, you are an object of suspicion to the Glasgow Police because of emotional recognition. And your emotions are wrong, as far as they're concerned, but they're healthy. They're what healthy people feel when they want to on television. Not to feel anger is psychopathic. It's weird.